Hello everyone, my name is Ashley. Today's video is going to be how to camp at a festival like a pro. These are some of the tips I've accumulated. I'm not someone that likes to do a ton of preparing, which I'm assuming most of you are like me. These are tips that are super easy for anyone, even the laziest person to do, to be able to have the best camping festival experience. So the first thing starts off very simply, get there as early as you can. The earlier you get there, the better spot you'll have closer to the entrance of the venue. Getting there first is never a problem. But that being said, most camping festivals you have to arrive in with the people you want to be with. If you and your friend get there completely separate times, it's a first come first serve. So they're just going to be filling up the field down like lane. So you guys are just going to be completely separate. That being said, if you go and get in line and you're going through security, you guys are going in two separate lines and one goes little bit earlier you're gonna have to pull off to the side because your sights are gonna be like a couple spaces away from each other because of the cars that got in between you you always want to be right next to your friend for obvious reasons if there's enough of you say there's like five cars and you guys are all right in a row that makes one big campsite instead of like five smaller ones me and my friends all come in right in a row put our cars along the side towards the road where people are walking to give us a little bit more privacy and then we each kind of go around in a circle to put our tents around there and then we have like a living room where we put all of our easy ups normally we have like two or three easy ups and we'll put them all right next to each other to create kind of a living room area and all of our tents face in so we like wake up come out our tents and we we'll walk straight into like our living room that being said another great way to get everyone in together is to come up with a meeting area me and my friends always meet up at a big store so like on the way to electric forest we stop at the walmart in muskegon then we can all get booze and it can still like be relatively cold by the time we get there. We want the car to have as much space as possible on the long drive and then as soon as we get very close to the area we get all of our last minute things that we don't want to be taking up space in the car that we don't need through the whole car ride. So we get a ton of food that we didn't have, like bags of chips and all that that we didn't want to take up space in the car. We don't want boxes of beer to be taking up space in the car. And then also we all get to leave together at the same time. That being said, on that stop we also all completely fill up our cars with gas. When you're at a festival it's always going to be really hot. You're always going to want a way to charge your phone. You can get get in the car, turn on the AC and escape the heat. Make sure when you're entering the festival, the car has a full tank of gas. That way you can turn on the car and escape the heat and not have to think about it. It's cheaper to do that and fill up and pay for a tank of gas with your friends. It's gonna be like $50 total and then you all split it. Then it is going to be to buy a locker to charge your phone or to pay for like a VIP ticket so you can have AC. Just fill up the tank before you get in. The last thing you want is have two days left and be like almost on empty have to think about getting to the gas station ASAP when you leave just like everyone else probably is so it's just nice to be able to have that peace of mind so right when you get there always take note of where you are I did this one year I didn't take good enough note and I was like coming back with only one other person we're like where the hell did we camp we didn't take note of the name of the road the general area of the camping we didn't take good enough note of any landmarks we were so confused you can write it in your phone you can drop a pin in your phone because even though a lot of the time festival service won't work your GPS Yes, always kind of works so that will help you find where the pin is dropped because sometimes cell phones die you don't want to rely completely on a note on your phone or anything on your phone you can add a flag or string lights around your tent or something so the flag can make it so you can see where your tent is from a little bit farther away and the line of tents will just kind of be your home base once you're in the general area so you can get string lights that are battery powered you get them super cheap places like home goods tj mac amazon this is like my life-saving tip i do this anytime i go somewhere where i know i'm drinking or any concert at all now i'll write a note on my phone that says please give me back my phone if you find this hopefully the person if i lose it doesn't just want to steal it but hopefully that will humanize me a little bit more and then all right please call this person's name and then i leave a friend's phone number when you write the note on your phone set it as your lock screen so it's the first thing the person sees when they pick up the phone so if something happens this person knows exactly what to do with my phone and know that somebody's looking for it, it gives a more of a direct way to get it right back to you rather than like having to try to figure out what lost and found it's at maybe if the person's thinking about stealing it they will be less likely to knowing that you're someone that cares about your phone and like just humanize the whole situation more i've never tested this one out but i've heard about this one online there is a bluetooth texting app i will put the name of the app on the screen because i can't remember it right now but pretty much if you're within like a football field you're within like 100 yards of someone and they have their bluetooth on you just put on a certain channel and you should be able to text that person and get into contact with them without service so me and my friends are testing that out this year at electro forest we'll see how well it works obviously if you're at a completely different stage than them you're not gonna be able to find them if 
you know your friends are all gonna be at a certain stage if you get into the general area you're probably gonna be able to text them and find them way easier that being said you always want a way to find your friends without a phone because people don't always have it charged and i don't even know if that bluetooth texting app works but hopefully it does because that sounds so cool make a totem so your friends can always find you if you always have a totem get a bowl that's really light i went to the dollar store and got a broomstick and cut the broom off the bottom and it's tall enough that like even if i'm resting on the ground you want something that will still be above your head so if you have to tape two together that work you want something really light so when you're holding it you're not just getting tired that way you know your friends always know what to be looking for and where to find you in the crowd you don't have your own you have to find a way to be able to text them and be like hey we're by this we're by the totem of shia labeouf you're always going to be by a different one but if you have your own then they always know what to look for the next tip is to always bring a spare key for obvious reasons if you ever lock your key in your car or lose your key that would be a huge problem i did that one year i was in a rush and all my friends were leaving to go into the festival and i need to grab something from the car i ran and i threw the key back and we couldn't find it thank god my friend had a spare key because she would have been stuck like literally 50 15 hours away from home but well, her car she literally wanted to kill me and then my friend found the key months later in her tent i put it in the wrong tent because i was in such a rush so always have an extra key i think everyone should have a portable charger because if you don't have a portable charger you're gonna be asking your friends for their portable charger it's gonna be so annoying i would buy a portable charger don't buy the cute ones from urban outfitters go on groupon or amazon and buy one that has a huge charge in it i don't know how to say the name of the scale i've done this in another video there's a scale that they use i don't know what the scale it's called but about 2000 of whatever the scale is is about one phone charge for at least an iphone so i have one that that should be about 10 charges like that's ridiculous you'll never need that much when i went to coachella i left and it was like still halfway charged you can find them for really cheap online like i said if you go to the store they're gonna be about 100 bucks but you can get them for way cheaper for about like 25 or 30 dollars that's what i did and i actually just bought another one just in case so i always have a backup and I will put some on the screen or link them down below or whatever for the one that I have and then one that my friend had that he suggested that I just bought. So the next big thing that a lot of people surprisingly don't know and I guess not that surprisingly, I had no idea, never would have thought of this my first time, but luckily my friend thought of it is to bring an easy up. Your easy up is going to be the thing that provides you shade. I always thought when I saw people setting up their campsites and taking photos at their campsites at festivals with the tapestries all around, that just thought it was because it was cool in the background, but the tapestries are actually to provide shade for you and privacy for you around the easy up so at noon the sun's gonna be right above you it doesn't matter where you are in the easy up but any time other than noon the sun's going to be somewhere in the sky that's going to be like beaming in the side of your tent and then there's only going to be a very small area that has shade so always bring tapestries for your privacy and for keeping your camping area cool always have a lantern and tables and all that so you can have places to put your drinks always bring tons of extra trash bags normally they provide you a trash bag at least at a camping festival but always have a ton of your own because you don't want to be the asshole that leaves a bunch of crap and trash at your campsite because somebody's cleaning it up after whether it's you or not there's people that are volunteers or whatever that have to go back and clean that up so always try to leave your campsite in pretty good condition when you leave one thing that happened to me by accident because i couldn't find like a chair to bring to sit in at the campsite i brought a cot and the cot is like honestly a lifesaver for everyone every year so it just makes it so it's like a couch area rather than a full-blown chair multiple people can sit in it it's pretty much the size of a chair when it's all folded up in the car but it provides seating for like three or four people and then every morning when the sun beams into your tent and lights your tent up it makes it so unbearably hot i always bring the cot and there's always one and the first person that rolls out of the tent in the morning is a lucky one that gets to go get outside and hang out in the cool with all the nice breeze going by so the cot is literally a lifesaver i always keep that out under the easy up and it's the best thing ever it is now an essential when the cot's gone now i always bring a couch pouch i will put a picture on the screen as well for that blow up couch and it rolls up into like a little bag like the size of a backpack so you can bring it into the festival and keep it at your campsite and it just feels like you're like laying in a hammock or an air mattress and it's legit the best thing ever an actual lifesaver if you don't want to be sitting upright but you don't also want to be in your hot ass tent they're so easy you get them at like bed bath and beyond you can get them at amazon the best purchase ever i use it not at festivals to bring them to like parks around it's such a good investment they're pretty much just like two trash bags attached to each other you open them up and you run and you catch the wind if it's really windy 
you're really lucky you don't even have to run and they just fill themselves up and then you just close it and clip it shut and it's like an air mattress but you don't need any electricity to fill it up you also want to make sure to always bring as much ice as possible and keep everything as cool as possible the ice is going to melt very quickly and yes there is ice available at the general store along with anything else you might forget which is really convenient but you don't want to try to buy anything there because it's so expensive so always keep your cooler in the shade as much as you can like as the sun's moving moving around the campsite to make sure it stays in the shade will preserve the ice as long as possible. The next thing you definitely want to bring are baby wipes and dry shampoo. I avoid the showers at all costs at a camping festival. I've literally, I say this in freaking every video and I'm disgusting, but I've never taken a full blown shower at a camping festival before. So I always bring baby wipes and that's how I keep my body relatively clean. If I didn't have baby wipes, there's no way I'd be able to say that I've never taken a shower at a festival before. Bring dry shampoo for your hair and then I also just go to the water refill stations and wash my hair if I'm feeling really disgusting. I can shave, even just kind of give myself a sponge bath if I need to. The lines are just way too long. Sometimes you have to pay. Sorry if the lighting is like getting weird. This clouds outside. This is LA. We're not supposed to have clouds. I'm confused. The next thing is, is camping festivals are always going to be a lot on your feet. Wear shoes that you know for sure are comfortable. Don't wear shoes that you're going to break in the first time there. Something that is a trick for me is, again, don't wait till you get blisters. I have this blister stick. It looks like a deodorant stick and you put it anywhere you know you're prone to get blisters. And then I put blister band-aids on top of those. They're the best. They're like really cushiony. And once you get a blister, if you put it on, it pretty much saves the day. Like you really don't feel like you have a blister anymore. But I keep them there prevent anyway you obviously just don't want blisters in general then i grab gauze and i put medical tape around it and then i put i don't even know what it's called it's like more like sticky gauze that i wrap around that and i did that at coachella and i'm an idiot and didn't do it at the beginning of the day so i literally got blisters within an hour of entering in the venue the first day and i went back and kept the wraps around my feet and it saved my feet for the rest of the week and my feet were completely fine. Another pro thing to bring are fans. Me and my friends have like hand fans that we use. People also buy the fans that are like battery powered to so always bring extra batteries for anything that needs a battery like that and then you can fill them up with water. You're going to be outside and hot for most of the time so you want to make sure you bring some sort of way to cool down for when you're not at the campsite and don't have access to your car. Another thing is just because it's hot and it's summer doesn't mean that it's going to be hot at night so make sure to bring something warm. My first time at a camping festival I didn't realize how cold it would get and I remember I brought sweatpants but they didn't have like elastics at the bottom and it just made me so much more cold. I didn't bring a comforter or a sleeping bag. I just had a regular blanket and I was pretty freaking cold. Make sure you're checking the weather and looking online. Go on Reddit and all that to see what people say about what the weather is usually like. My final suggestion is try not to overpack. It makes the drive so much more miserable. You have so much more to clean up. You don't end up wearing all of it. You don't end up using everything you bring. So try to fit as light as possible and be smart about what you bring. At this point, I have what I need pretty much down to a science and it's so nice to have pretty much everything I need always and know that I'm not taking up extra space and having to lug more things in and out of my car that I never end up using. And that is my final tip. Festival season is upon us so hopefully this list helped some of you get ready and get excited for all the festivals coming up. I'm going to Electric Forest. I am so freaking excited. It's my fifth year. If you need to know anything about Electric Forest, whether you've never been before and you need advice, I have videos on that. I also have videos just kind of talking about Electric Forest. If you need just your daily dose of electric force in your life. I have other videos about that. I'm going to be pumping out so many more in the coming month or so leading up to the festival. So please subscribe if you want all that electric forest content and festival goodness in general. I'm actually going to freestyle sessions. There are going to be videos coming about that. Thank you for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye!